Do you believe in angels? Do you want to believe in angels, but you're just not sure or you're worried about looking silly or what other people would think? I want to welcome you to this very special edition of the Messages of Hope show, where we're going to focus on all things angels. I'm here to convince you that angels are real. Actually, I just got corrected by my team, my team of guides, the second I said that, and they said, it's not my job to convince you of anything. Your heart already knows what is true. I'm here to share with you some no other explanation stories about angels. By that, I mean that you'll hear it and try to find another explanation for how those stories are, are possible. I'm going to answer questions from you, my Messages of Hope community. And then as a special treat, I'm going to share a very short practice with you to help you connect with the angels. So I have to tell you that my first real encounter or truly embracing the possibility that angels were real happened when I went to a medium for the very first time. This was long before I knew that I would one day be practicing as a medium. I took my husband to a woman who I knew was the real deal. In fact, she is known as the angel lady. But I didn't want to hear from angels. I was hoping to hear from my stepdaughter, Susan, who had passed. And I honestly didn't know if the afterlife was real at that point. I'd had no personal experience of guides or loved ones who had passed coming to me. Now it's just unbelievable to me that I connect regularly with angels and with other people's loved ones in my work as a medium. But most of you who are part of the community already, who know my work, know that I spent 20 years as a Navy commander and talking about angels was not normally on the agenda at our meetings. I was very left brain. So imagine sitting there with this medium and all I wanna do is connect with Susan. And the very first thing out of the medium's mouth was, oh my goodness, there are two of the largest angels I've ever seen standing behind you. I had to really keep my composure and not roll my eyes because first of all, that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to know that Susan still exists and she does. But also I just couldn't believe it. And then she followed this with, and oh my goodness, there are all of these little cherubs just floating around you. They say you're so spiritual. Well, I have to tell you, I didn't feel very spiritual at that time in my life. Uh, I didn't know anything about cherubs, and I certainly couldn't believe that they were around me. So that was my basis. That's where I've come from as far as angels. People would talk to me about them, and I just didn't believe it. No personal experience of it. And then due to my meditative practice, my commitment to connecting personally with my stepdaughter, Susan, I was meditating every day. And if you've read my book, Messages of Hope, or watched the documentary Messages of Hope, you know that I opened up a very clear connection across the veil and am now working as a medium. But in the early days, when I was just starting to do readings, I had written a book about a wonderful medium and gaiman called The Priest and the Medium. So I was speaking about mediumship what makes it possible about the intersection of science and spirituality and was invited to do a talk on that at a mind body spirit expo in North Carolina. So there I was giving my talk. When it finished, people came up and formed a line so that I could autograph copies of the priest and the medium. I noticed that there were these three women hanging out at the back of the line, just kind of giggling together. And when the line finally got to them, they looked at me all excited and they said, we have to tell you, the whole time you were talking, there was this giant angel standing behind you. And in all honesty, I thought to myself, oh, here we go again with the big angel thing. Because even though I had opened up a connection to the astral realm where our loved ones go when they've passed, at that point in my life, I had no personal experience of angels. And I was still in that left brain mode even though I was working as a medium. I'll call myself a baby medium at the time. So I, I honored what they were saying. I said, well, that's nice to hear. And, and they were then discussing amongst themselves, well, which, which angel do you think it was? One said, I think it was Ariel. And another one, I don't know who she said, but I remember one of them said, 
I think it was Azrael, the angel of death, which sounds a little scary, but I wasn't scared by it. I, I looked that angel up later and, and it's an angel that helps people across the veil, which would make sense for somebody doing the work of a medium. Well, I thank them for that. And I signed their books and they turned to leave. And as they all turned their backs on me, the strangest thing happened. I was overcome with this wave of love for these three women. Now, that didn't come from my human side. I mean, I liked people at the time, but I hadn't really discovered who we are as souls, all of us, souls here and now, and that our souls just know only love and connection. So clearly, this was something that welled up from the soul, probably helped by that very large angel who was behind me, who I did not acknowledge at the time. But as a result of that wave of love, I thought towards these women, I love you which was a very unusual thing to think and radiate. Well, in perfect response to that, with perfect timing, the one closest to me turned around, looked at me and said out loud, I love you too. And she gave me this look, turned away and started to walk off. Well, I was so stunned by her reaction and the timing of it, as if we'd had an a two-way conversation out loud, not just her speaking to me and mine telepathic. I reached out and I grabbed onto her shoulder and I gently turned her around and I said, why did you just say that? And she gave me this very knowing look, didn't say another word and walked off. Well, I went back to my home at the time it was in Florida. And what do you think I did? <laughs> the very first thing I did was go to a bookstore and buy a book on angels. Suddenly I needed to know more because making the connection between these three women who clearly saw the same thing behind me and that telepathic loving exchange, couple it with that, that overwhelming feeling that I couldn't deny of connection, which is what love is, I dove into that book on angels. Now, it didn't suddenly open me up, although hearing stories about angels, and which is part of the reason why I'm sharing my stories with you, is one of the keys to opening ourselves to having our own experiences. So I'm reading the book, and I'm not quite convinced that angels are real, but surely by reading the book, I see that many, many people do believe in angels, and many have had personal experiences with them. So let me just interrupt my story right now to tell you another key is not only belief, a key to connecting with angels yourself, beyond belief is setting a clear intention. So we can pause right now. Let's do a brief practice now, and I'll have another one at the end. But we just move our awareness to our hearts. Get centered with a nice, relaxing breath. And from the heart, state to the universe, universe, in my soul, I know there's a part of me that believes angels are real. And I am setting the intention now to have a personal experience with the angelic realm. Thank you so much. And that's all it takes to set a clear intention, which is what much more powerful when you pause, get centered and move to the heart than just saying, well, that'd be really cool if that happened. So you should feel the difference between that energy just, just dispersing and what you just did a moment ago by setting a clear intention. So getting back to the story, here I am in the midst of reading this book on angels. It's lying on my bedstand. The next day, I go to do a reading for a client. I don't know who she is. She comes to my door in person to have the reading. I take her into my study where I do the readings and we sit down facing each other. The first woman who came in from the spirit world who I sensed was an older woman who I could tell from the way she was communicating with me. And if you don't know my work, I'm all about evidence. I need those across the veil to show me they're here by sharing things with me that I couldn't possibly know. Well, she showed me her personality, which I described, but she also told me that she was not related to my client. She was a friend, but it was unusual because she was clearly a generation older than my client. And then she started doing what looked like dealing out cards. I just, after having described the personality and this action, 
my client got all excited. She said, oh, I know exactly who this is. This is a friend of mine, but she's not playing cards. She's dealing out tarot cards, which she used frequently and was really good at. So now that we've validated that my client knows who this woman is, I tuned in again and I said, she's showing me holding her hands out. She's holding your hand and she's holding somebody else's hand. There are three of you sitting in a circle holding hands. And the woman said, yes, it's a prayer circle. Three of us were part of a prayer circle with this woman. And I was so happy to feel the connection that these two women enjoyed. And I looked at the woman in spirit and asked her, what is it you have to share? And I burst out laughing. I turned to the client and I said, your friend is really funny. She just looked at me and she crooked her finger at me. And she said, very seriously, angels are real. Now, she made me laugh because she was, you know, telling me a thing or two. But surprisingly, instead of laughing, my client burst into tears. This was an unexpected reaction. So I said, why did that hit you like that? And as she's wiping her tears away, she said, Suzanne, this woman was like a mother to me. When she passed, I was devastated. I stood outside your door before I rang the doorbell. And I said to her, we'll call her Mary. I said, Mary, I really need to know that you're still part of my life. And I know you believed in angels. So if you're really here, I want you to talk about angels with Suzanne. That was all it took for me to trust that angels are real, to have somebody in non-physical form who was into spirituality before she passed, have crossed the veil and come back and clearly looked at me to say, listen, you, <laughs> you can believe that angels are real. It opened me up. And that, like I said earlier, for you is the first key to be willing to believe, to be open to the experience. And that's when I started to connect more with the angelic realm. I want to invite you to watch one of my more popular videos. It's called Archangel Michael is Real. This story leaves no doubt. So we'll put it at the end of this special episode on YouTube. And it's just so filled with evidence. And you'll understand now why I have no doubt that angels and the arch archangelic realm are real. When I shared with my assistant, Lynette, that I was going to be recording today, a special on angels, she was a little surprised. She said, Suzanne, it was 26 years ago today that her sister, she said, my sister was saved by an angel. When I, when I heard the story from Lynette, I asked her if I could share it with you. And she said, absolutely. It was so profound that she marks this day on her calendar. That's why she knew that this was this special, we could really call it an angelversary, right? So what happened was her sister, Lynette's sister, was in a car accident, flipped the car over. It was on its roof, knocked her unconscious. When she came to, she was panicked because she was hanging upside down all alone. Suddenly, the back of the car filled with an immense bright white light. And she heard a very calm voice say, just release your seatbelt, all will be fine. And Lynette's sister did exactly that. And when the police showed up at the scene of the accident, there was Lynette's sister wandering around, a little bruised, a little battered, but wandering around all alone, wondering where that man went who had spoken so calmly and showed her what to do and helped her be calm and get out of the car. And she could have easily died in that accident. So her sister to this day and the whole family celebrates and knows that that was an angelic helper in that moment. So I know that so many of you watching have your own stories. More of you want to believe. I hope this is opening to, opening you to it. I'm going to get to your questions very shortly here. But first, let's just define what an angel is. The best definition that I can come up with, and I want to just tune into my guides, Sanaya, as I talk so that I'm not just talking off the top of my head. They say, go ahead is 
by giving you the definition of angel, it means messenger. And angels are most certainly helpers and messengers of advice and guidance for us. But first and foremost, the guides want us to know that we don't need to view them as people. They'll take on human form if we need to recognize them. And many of them are depicted throughout history with wings, but mostly that's because when they show up to humans, they have such a bright and almost solid light around them, it appears like wings, but they don't need wings to fly. They are absolutely non-physical beings, but expressions of the same source that's breathing you that flows through all of us. Angels perform what we're, we call miracles. But what is a miracle? My definition as taught to me by the spirit world of a miracle is when the veil that keeps the non-physical world from our awareness parts enough that we can't deny we are part of something so much greater than this physical world. And this is all part of the main teaching that I share with the world called the awakened way of living. Oh, I have a, a great announcement for you before I get to the questions and the practice we're going to do. I'm so happy to announce that in April of 2024, we'll be releasing a brand new book. Hay House is publishing it and it's called The Awakened Way, Making the Shift to a Divinely Guided Life. So many of you have asked me, do you have your practices for connecting across the veil written down anywhere? Certainly, I have a lot of them in video form. A lot of them are available as gifts on my website, suzangiesman.com. But now in one volume, we're going to have all of the teachings of what it takes to live a consciously connected and divinely guided life and the practices. So I'm excited about that. I'd invite you now to go to my website and make sure you're on my mailing list because we're going to have promotions in the pre-launch days that are going to have some really nice bonuses to go with them. I also invite you, if you're enjoying this, this uh, program, to click subscribe right now so you don't miss future programs with messages of hope. I don't know if you can feel the energy, but we are part of a beautiful Awakened Way community. I hope you can feel the love. I've been told that anytime I work with my guides, there is a special transmission of energy. It's kind of like a tuning fork. And we all just come into alignment with who we really are. According to the first principle of the Awakened Way, we are not only human, we are souls. And the angels accompany us all the time to help us get to know ourselves as not only human, but as souls. The angels help us to know the second principle of the awakened way, which is you're part of one big web. And the third principle, the healing and creative force of the universe is love. We're all connected, which means we are always connected with each other here, with our loved ones who have passed, and with the angelic realm and any realm, because the basic essence of all of us is the same source. If that's not a message of hope, I don't know what is. I want to share with you uh, two experiences I've had where I haven't actually seen angels, yet they show up in their own way, thanks to digital technology. I have one photo where I was out hiking in nature, of course, with my husband, Ty. And this blue orb showed up in the photo, settled perfectly over the top of my head. I seem to uh, remember Archangel Michael telling me, that's me, which is pretty cool. Now, my second experience just happened yesterday when I was doing a reading for a woman. And right at the beginning of the reading, when we were talking about some health challenges that she's having, suddenly this beautiful stream of iridescent blue light came down straight into the crown of her head through here and moved off in a curve to the side of her. I said, do you see that light? She said, no. I said, you don't see it? She looked a little more closely and she then saw it. And the more we talked about her health issues, and I was telling her that Archangel Michael was present and that he was going to help her with her healing, the light intensified and grew in a way I have never seen. And I know that if we were both watching without 
the digital technology of using the internet, we would not likely have seen that with our physical eyes. But the spirits tell me that there's something in energy that they're able to manipulate, which is why we often see orbs show up on digital cameras or our uh, security cameras that we couldn't see with our physical eye. So I'm grateful to technology, which is helping us to know angels are real. So I'm going to get on to the questions submitted by you in my beautiful Messages of Hope community. You can always subscribe to my Facebook page, and I will often ask for your questions there. We do weekly questions and answers on the Messages of Hope show. By the way, I've just uh, split out my YouTube channel into the Suzanne Giesman channel where we'll have shorter videos. And right now you are on the brand new Messages of Hope channel. So if you want to be notified when I have upcoming shows, please subscribe. Even if you're already subscribed to the Suzanne Giesman channel, hit subscribe now and you will be, if you click the bell, notified of new programs. But happy good news. We're going to try to have a program every week like I used to do with Unity Radio. And we'll have Q&A sessions with my girls, Lynette and Bev, asking the questions which my guides and I will answer. We'll have special programs like this on specific topics, and I'll continue to have really great guests focusing, of course, on the afterlife and connecting across the veil, which is very, very real, my friends. The greater reality that you are part of is accessible to all of us, not just the people who are working as professional mediums and angel communicators and pet communicators. All of us can learn to do this. Why? Remember the awaken way, because you are not only human. So what I've done is I took a whole bunch of the questions that were just submitted when I asked, what is it you all want to know about angels? I'm going to ask my guides and we'll go through as many as we can. How are we doing for time? I don't want to go too long and take up too much of your time, but I hope you're having fun like I am. And I won't forget that we're going to do that special practice at the end of this session here to help you connect even more clearly with the angels. So the first person who responded to my request for questions didn't actually give a question. She just mentioned that she had a son who has crossed the veil and she was grieving deeply. And boy, isn't that, you know, the circumstance of so many of us in this community, they come to the Messages of Hope program because you want to make sure your loved ones are still part of your lives. And I guarantee you that is so. The preponderance of the evidence, years of personal experience of two-way interactive conversations with loved ones who have passed and with guides and angels has left zero doubt in my military mind, as we used to say in the Navy, that this is very real. So her comment was, if angels are real, I could use your help. Well, you have help from the angels, you have help from me. And how about if all of us just take a breath for a moment and send our love outward to anyone who's grieving, especially those of you who really know angels are real and know that all of us can act as conduits of healing energy simply because we are all channels of the life force. Let's just send it out to that woman and to everyone else and know that in sending it outward, even if you're the one who's grieving right now, we're all going to receive that special transmission of energy. I hear, and so it is. So I'm glad she asked the question. And I know that that energy was sent. So here we go with more questions. I heard recently that we should never pray to angels. I only ask for help, thank them, and send them love. What is the best way for angels to feel our gratitude and appreciation? You know how to love. Even if you have lived with people that don't love you back, it's innately part of you as a soul to know how to love. So the best way is to go to your heart and feel gratitude. There's always something to be grateful for. Feel that gratitude well up in your heart and send it to the angelic realm and say, thank you for being part of my life, even if I may not sense you right now. The best way to pray to the angels is acknowledge with gratitude that you are grateful for their assistance and then just say, I know you know what's going on in my life. 
thank you for being here to help me. I'm open to whatever assistance you can give, whatever is in my greatest and highest good. That's just one way. As long as it comes from the heart, understand and know. I'm speaking a little more slowly now because I'm making sure that I'm listening to my guides as I give you these answers. Understand and know the angels know your very thoughts. They know your challenges without you even needing to say it. But to send that love to them is an acknowledgement of their presence. And uh, my guys say ensures that you are open to whatever gifts they send your way. You will be more open to them when you ask clearly. All right. When we cross over and have a life review, are the times when angels answered our prayers or assisted us revealed to us? So for those of you not familiar with the life review, when we cross the veil and we find ourselves sitting with our spirit guides and loved ones who have passed before us, there is often a time when we see our entire life that just finished, our incarnation, pass before us like a movie, and we feel the effects of all of our thoughts and actions, good and not so good. So are the times when our angels answered our prayers or assisted us revealed? You can count on it, the guides say. So absolutely, that's revealed to you and celebrated. And it's really funny because uh, the person who asked this on YouTube, somebody else responded and said, when I read this, I loved it. And I immediately heard, Yes, and when our prayers were not when our prayers were not answered, we understand why. That is a very insightful point to make. That our prayers are not always answered, and when they're not, there's a reason. The challenge is that we don't always see why our prayers weren't answered. My beloved friend Brenda, who passed in 2018, is now my mediumship guide. Many people wondered why a healing that she had just before she passed didn't work. You know, it sounded as if her prayers weren't answered when, in fact, she got across the veil and came through to me with amazing evidence that I have told online and in person in many presentations before she came across and said, but I was healed. I was healed at an emotional and spiritual level. And that's why she was talking to me so quickly after passing because of that awakening that she had. So just remember, death is not a tragedy to those who pass. Of course, it's devastating to those of us left behind. That's normal. That's love. But those across the veil immediately see they're still with us. They get to move forward with us. They're still aware of our thoughts. As we open up to their presence, imagine how that pleases them. So next question, getting back to angels. Are we assigned one or several angels at birth and they do they stay with us until we transition? Oh, okay, a little bit of a lip twitch there. My guides always do that to me when I connect with them clearly and they have an answer they want me to share. I can't make my lip twitch. So they say, pay attention to that. You may get a certain symptom in your body to let you know your guides are with you. So guides, spirit guides, are a level above the astral realm where we go after our immediate physical, immediately after our physical incarnation, the astral realm. Then we have spirit guides. To my understanding, the angelic realm is a higher frequency than spirit guides, but each of the higher realms can communicate with the realms, all of the realms beneath it. So your loved ones who have passed can communicate with you, are aware of you, and they can go up um, higher as well. But we may not necessarily, due to the filters of our physical body, be able to attune to the higher realms without training. All right. And that's what so much of my work is about, showing you how to do that. So above spirit guides is the angelic realm. Each level higher affects greater numbers of people. So you have an individual spirit guide who's with you every moment from birth. That's a whole other special topic we'll do in another show. 
The angelic realm covers larger numbers of people for specific reasons. The archangelic realm, even higher, archangels higher than your run-of-the-mill angels, if I may, and they definitely have specific roles as well, such as healing and protection. So are we assigned one or several angels at birth? Not necessarily. However, there are realms that we call guardian angels. And my guides have told me that not everyone has a guardian angel all the time, but those who have a special propensity towards being, shall we say, uh, clumsy, <laughs> more, more likely to get into accidents, will have a gar guardian angel watching over your shoulder much more often than those who are uh, more sure-footed. That's uh, an analogy. Did some angels ever incarnate as humans? One of our community wants to know. My guides answer that they do temporarily sometimes to perform their miracles, but most are almost like a different species. They're very familiar with the human experience. I hear that they can completely relate to what we're going through because they can experience all at once what it is like to be human they understand us better than we understand ourselves and therefore there's no need to incarnate wow that's the first time i've heard that come through that way so it's very cool so really wonderful to know that we have helpers who understand us better than we understand ourselves okay moving on to more questions from all of you and again if you Subscribe now to the Messages of Hope show that you're watching. And especially if you go to my homepage and sign up for my newsletter list, I'll be sending out calls in advance for more questions on separate special topics in the future. So thank you for joining the community. How are angels different from spirit guides? That's pretty much what we answered, except the guides right now tell me to make sure I make the point that spirit guides the vast majority have spent incarnations as human in physical body. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so they say, the spirit guides, my guides, Sanaya, say that they had to go about it the hard way, right? The long, slow way, like we are in human form now, whereas angels just immerse themselves in the energy of the human species experience and know what we're going through. Next question. Do angels all have names? The guides say at the archangelic level, you all would recognize them by their names because the species mind, human species, have agreed upon names that have been passed down through eons that was energetically transmitted in the beginning for example, you will call this one Michael. You will call this one Raphael or Gabriel. However, at the, the angelic realm, just beneath the archangelic realm, you would know us by our light, they say. So just like we have different shades of colors or different tones of music, the angels recognize themselves that way. But they're saying now that just like spirit guides, if you ask for a name, they'll give you one. But usually the relationship between angels who drop in to help us with certain issues, we don't have an ongoing relationship with those angels who are helping large groups of people to the extent that many people, I just saw a little orb go through, did you? You can back up the video there and watch it. They can, they, are, they don't spend as much time with us at the angelic realm as the archangels do with people repeatedly that we've given archangels names. I hope that made sense. You, if as you become aware of angels helping you, and I know that there are a lot of you who actually see them, why not ask them, what shall I call you? And they'll give you a name. Okay, moving on. Do the angels always help us release from the body when transitioning? There are several questions from this one person, so we'll do it one at a time. Do they always help us release from the body when transitioning? And the guides say, not always, but your spirit guides do. In some cases, 
there is help from the angelic realm. Remember, think higher octaves, higher frequency bands, and all of these octaves interpenetrate us. So the angelic realm is all around you now, but the guides are telling me that the angels step in as help is needed. All right. Do they always help the soul leave the body before negative impact, like in an accident? And the guides say, look at that negative energy. So they raised it right away with the breath. The guides say the soul does that itself. There is an automatic mechanism that cuts off human awareness so that suffering does not ensue. Rest assured that loved ones of yours who have passed, who have gone through trauma, were not aware of pain at that moment, even though the body may have automatically reacted in a way that witnesses might have assumed pain. At the soul level, this awareness is cut off and all is well and good with the soul. You do not need angelic help for this to happen. It is a built-in protective mechanism. Do not worry about suffering. Wow, that's very comforting. All right. Ooh. I'm very grateful for the, the flow of the answers here, and I hope that you can feel the higher energy that's coming through in those answers. Next question. Thank you all for submitting them. How do we best ask for angelic assistance and guidance? Thank you so much. I love everything that you do. Well, I love this community. You you motivate me to connect with you because I can feel your love coming back, and it, it means the world. My whole team, Bev, Lynette, Valerie, Jayesh, Stephanie, uh, they're all part of the team and we couldn't do it without all of you. So how do we best ask for angelic assistance and guidance? We did it at the beginning here, of just getting centered, moving awareness to the heart, feeling that gratitude, sending it out to the angels and asking whatever's in your heart. Very, very simple. It does not need to be highfalutin language. I often say it could just be, hey, angels, I really need help here. And they know you mean no disrespect. They understand where you are. And you really don't even need to put your words into your thoughts into words. They get it. They understand you. They know you. How comforting is that? I have to assure you that I never say anything just to placate people or make people feel good. This is coming from over a decade of interacting with the higher realms from preponderance of the evidence from these connections that this help from across the veil is very, very real. You are not alone. So why don't you sense them? Can you feel the hair on your head right now? Not unless the wind blows, not unless you shake your head, right? That's how close the angels and guides always are. They are so much a part of a rea our reality, but our physical senses don't allow us to sense them. I thought I saw something back there, but it, it was just a change in the light. See, I'm, I'm constantly aware, and that's what I'd like you to work on doing. Increasing your awareness. Let's just set the intention right now. Another practice, right? Stay with me. Take a nice, relaxing breath. Move your awareness to the heart. Angels, I would love if you would help me remain more aware when you and my guides are assisting me in my daily life. Thank you so much. And you just watch now. And some of you, the skeptics, that's okay. You might say, well, it's just because I'm saying that and setting my intention. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's how it works. And because you are always connected with the higher realms, now you'll be aware of how they work in your life. I know that some of the questions we're getting to, in fact, the very next one points to how they do that. And this person says, I see triple numbers most of the time. Even my license plate is 777. I woke up this morning at 333. Is that from my guides? And I'll say, is that from the angels? Sometimes it's chance, no doubt. However, when you see this repeatedly, this is how spirit, the angels, your guides, and your loved ones across the veil have learned they can use your consciousness catching your awareness and pointing you to certain things at just the right time. They'll notice you might be just coming out of sleep and put the thought in your head, look at the clock now. You may feel you just happen to look at the clock. 
and you look up and it has that repeating numbers. People say, is that an angel message? I need to ask, because I was going to tell you my opinion on that. You don't want my opinion. We want to hear from the guides. Uh, okay. Huh, I was going to be wrong. That's why they grabbed me. I thought that that there is not necessarily specific meaning with each one, even though I've looked them up. And there are specific meanings assigned to 222, 333, 555, et cetera. The guides say you can trust these meanings assigned to numbers. There's something to it that has to do with the numbers themselves and also the collective consciousness of people agreeing, the shared agreement that this is what that means. But those meanings were handed down on high, they say, from those who could hear the advice and the guidance from across the veil. So if you're drawn to things, or for in the example of this, it was a woman who wrote this question, your license number is 777. I hope you've gone on the internet, internet and done a search. Metaphysical meaning of 777 or angel number 777. I remember my, my car mileage turned over to 55555 and I looked it up and it it makes you laugh because it's so appropriate for what's going on in your life. And that's when you know your mind is not separate from the one mind of source. This is part of the Awakened Way teaching. Understand that when you have these beautiful synchronicities, it's because you're tapping into greater and greater levels of the one mind we all share. My friends, that's called love. All right. Let's see. How are angels and spirit guides different? I believe we addressed that, but the second part of this question is helpful. Is the distinction between them important for us to know, or can we direct our prayers and intentions upwards? Upwards is what we do because it's a, a concession to the fact that their frequency is higher. But know again that angels and guides and your loved ones who have passed are part of different like channels on a TV network, right? They're just different frequencies that are all right here. We just can't sense them because our physical brain is not programmed to those channels. So yes, you can direct your questions, your prayers directly to a loved one or a guide or an angel or God itself, source itself, whatever you want to call the one divine mind that's guiding us all and of which we're all a part. However, just imagine how much powerful it is when you say, whoever has whatever is in my greatest and highest good, please help me with this. Certainly doesn't hurt to direct it to the angels. Okay, let's see. How can we tell when angels are with us? Variety of ways. First of all, trust that they are. My guides just made my heart palpitate. So they want me to talk about physical symptoms. Do you suddenly get goosebumps? Does your hair stand on end? Do you feel a tingling? Do you get warmer or colder? My lip twitches with my spirit guides, but Sanaya says that angels are part of Sanaya. So they, they do a physical tick in my body that I cannot replicate myself. Very reassuring when that happens. They draw your attention to repeating numbers. They draw your attention to whatever you need in the moment in answer to your questions. So a variety of ways, and they will very clearly talk to you when you learn to trust what you hear. So I'm connecting with the angels right now, and they're answering uh, several times. You've noticed I, I get really in the flow, and it's really beautiful when we get answers from the higher levels. Okay, let's see. As mediums, can we have conversations with them? Of course, anybody even who's not a medium can have a conversation. The more you learn to connect with higher consciousness, and I have methods for doing that on my website and on my YouTube channel, the more you learn to expand your consciousness, the more you will hear and sense their answers and see the visions they put in your mind clearly. Let's see. I don't have a question, but I'd like to thank you, Suzanne, for opening up this conversation. I have angels living with me in my house. We all do. But this woman sees them coming and going and walking around. They seem to be very at home. I'm not always sure if they are living with me or I with them. It goes both ways, everybody. Both ways. I think that's really cool. 
I'm going to ask for that to happen. I would like to see you not only in lights on digital technology, but oh, it's my greatest prayer to see an angel appear. We read about those miracles, so I trust that it's possible, but I also trust the process. I hope you will too, and know that it will happen at just the right time. All right, let's see. I'm reading some of these questions and there are some repetitions here. So we're going to move forward. Let's see. Ask if angels would share with us some life hacks to expedite or strengthen our connections to them. I know we make connections so much more difficult by overthinking the process. Yes, that is the challenge. Thinking. The number one tool for connecting with the higher realms, especially with angels. Why did I just say especially? <laughs> the guides corrected me. They said with any of the higher realms is to get out of your head and stop thinking it through so much. Go into the heart, which is the bridge between your incarnated self and the more spacious aspect of you known as the soul. And trust the plot process. Be willing to be playful. Say, I'm open to anything. I may want to talk to angels, but I'm open to so much more. And I know that I am the light and I open to anything that is in my highest and greatest good. So that's just key number one, being like the child, right? Willing to play, no, having no fear about that, trusting that we are the light and that only benevolent beings will come to us. The other thing is creating space in your awareness so that your the monkey mind isn't constantly going. How are you going to notice if an angel is present with you if you're constantly focused on you as only human? So another video I want to recommend to you, if you're not familiar with it, is my, my video called No More Meditation Excuses. And that's when you can learn to practice my three-minute sip of the divine practice, which is an acronym for sit in peace. You practice that every day. What a life hack. All right. Are, are all angels capable of healing? Let me ask. Huh. Okay. Yes. Yes. They say absolutely. Because what is healing? The guides say healing is bringing the body into its natural state of alignment, of harmony and balance. And when you are working with those in the higher realms, the body naturally comes into alignment. Healing takes place even through programs like this for the energy coming through. Even using your technology now is of a nature such that the cells in the body rejoice and come into their natural alignment. Know that healing is taking place anytime you go to the heart and say, I am open to learning more and growing. Wow, very cool. So that gives a whole new definition to healing, doesn't it? Simply coming into our natural state of balance and harmony. Mm. Let's see, let's see. There's a question we already answered. <laughs> Here's a good one. Do we ever get on their nerves, the angel's nerves, meaning our guardian angel? Do they think to themselves, really, that's what you're going to do? I love this question. Oh, by the way, did you notice as I changed, as I noticed, notice as I turned my head there, I just happened to put on my little angel wing earrings. I would not have worn angel wings earrings when I first retired from the Navy. In fact, I was all into polo shirts and khaki pants at the time, but uh, I've come to loosen up, get more into my right side of the brain nature and find that balance. So getting back to this question, <laughs> the guide said that they caught my attention with the earrings because those uh, humans who are very rigid and only left brain and only logical will be less likely to be aware of angels and they would all like us to relax, to let down our hair, so to speak. And they say, oh, I wish you could feel the love that just washed through me. You could not possibly get on our nerves. When we say you are so very loved, there is an energy in this vibration that opens your 
hearts to our presence. So allow yourselves to receive this very important message that speaks truth. We know that we are intimately connected with you, interdependent beings who cannot be separated from you. And where there is awareness of total connection, this, dear ones, you may call love. Mm -hmm. There is no judgment from the angelic realms. There is only the total willingness to help you come to know what we know without question. Love is the answer. Love is all there is. You matter because you are part of this ongoing eternal stream of connection. Wow. So my girls and I, Lynette and Bev and I often joke, you know, when we see ourselves in hindsight, having done something very human and something that, that hurt us or, or stupid is really the word, right? Just human stuff. We, we, we say, man, we should have passed the popcorn because at the soul level, we were probably saying, really, are you going to do that? But the, the, the angels just understand us so completely. They, they know that we humans learn by trial and error. The guides just said three more questions. I love how they guide me. So let's see what those three are. I'm not filtering these. I'm just going through them in order. I loved that one. Do the angels really need us to ask for everything big, big and small to receive assistance or do they just know? We kind of addressed this earlier. We don't have to ask. They're going to jump in and help us like they did for Lynette's sister in, in that circumstance, which begs the question the guides say, why don't they jump in with every accident? Each soul is on its own path. We trust the process and know that things don't happen to us. They happen for us. Often things that happen are the results of other humans' free will choices. But when lives intersect, when we can learn from the effects of those choices, that is how we grow. And there are times that they won't step in, especially because death is not the end of our soul's growth and evolution. These aren't lessons, they say. They just grab me to make sure I make that point. These are not lessons that are here to punish us like you're going to learn your lesson. These are opportunities to grow stronger and faster by incarnating into human form where we learn from the duality from the opposites okay really cool so we don't have to ask but again when you ask it strengthens your awareness of the connection and you're more likely to hear and abide by and trust the answers and the guidance that come as a result. Do we have to, this is part of the same question. Do we have to ask over and over again? No. This shows your trust when you ask once and know that it was heard. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Are angels all large? I feel my guardian angel is petite. The guides say not necessarily large. They show up that way because their energetic field is so big. And they say in the, in the case of the particular questioner here, that petite energy is more of a highly refined divine energy. If you could see her light, the angel's light, it would blind you. Wow. Beautiful. Okay. And let's see, our last question before we do the practice, stay with me here, is, okay, there's one we already answered, so it doesn't count why are angels depicted with wings, okay, for their huge energy. Wonderful, can't wait for your next question and answer show. That's coming up soon, so I hope you subscribe to the new Messages of Hope show. And last question, I don't even know what it is. Oh, I love it. To be able to connect to our angels, do we have to be like all healthy and have proper foods and like look after our body and minds to have a connection? But can, or can you still connect if you're just a normal hamburger loving human? LOL. I am happy to report, but I don't want to report it without my guides. Let's shift here and connect. Remember, the awakened way, living a consciously connected, divinely guided life. Notice how I'm making this shift to check in. I want to model what you can do and how it helps you live your life more guided. 
The guides say it certainly helps you to maintain a balanced body, but we do not wish anyone to go overboard. You are here for pleasure, but you do learn by pain, which is why you get your food and alcohol hangovers. We would not let you go to excess without experiencing something to bring you back in balance. Hear us well. When you are well balanced, you can hear us well. So it behooves you to not do anything to excess, but please do enjoy the human pleasures which you have incarnated to enjoy. Listen to the body, listen to your heart, and you will know when you can and when it is best, when you can indulge in certain pleasures and when it is best to not partake. You are being guided in those moments. It is not just the body, but the body is a beautiful tool. Use it to guide you, but also turn to us, the angels, and we will never steer you wrong. Trust your heart, for that is the mouthpiece through which we speak. Wow, <laughs> I'm so grateful. Thank you, all angels. So one of the practices I was going to do was intention setting. So now I have to ask the angels, what is this practice that I asked you all to wait around and hear? Ah, they say it's a practice in trust, that that is what we need most of all. So ah, trusting not only the angels, but trusting the process of life. Love in full expression is life. Love in full expression flowing. So join me, please, now. Just set aside your phone or, in, or just set it down and just allow your eyes to close. Take a nice deep breath. Breathe in very slowly through the nose. Breathe out even longer through lightly pursed lips. Move your awareness out of the head into the heart. And may my words be your words as they're guided from above. Oh, angels, I know in this heart space in which I'm resting now that I could not get through this life alone. There are moments when I forget that I, like you, am a direct expression of the one divine light. I am asking your help now in trusting that I am never alone, in opening me to your presence. In this moment now, I turn up my heart light. Turn it up more now, please. Brighter, brighter, brighter. Fill your entire energy field with your heart light. Feel the warmth of it. See it glowing, a bright white and gold shimmering light filling all of you. The more you turn up your heart light on a regular basis, the easier it is for spirit to make its presence known through your energy field. Now sitting in this bright light that is you in human form, we ask spirit to help us trust this process. Angels, I wish to know in my heart with utter certainty that you are real, that angels are real. What sign are you going to show me in the next week that angels are with me? Show me or tell me now. And in that brief pause, the angels put into your mind's eye an image or put into your head a very specific word or name. Thank them now for that sign they've shown you. They know you're going to encounter that in the next week. And we set the intention that we will be on alert for that sign. Angels, we thank you so much for your presence in our lives and helping us come to trust. Just take a nice refreshing breath with a nice powerful intake and come back to normal waking consciousness. That was beautiful. It's always great to ask our angels, our guides for signs, for evidence. They don't mind. I would love if you put in the comments section two things for me. 
do you believe in angels and come back and put in the comment section when you get your sign tell us what your sign was and how it showed up in your life and we will all as part of this message of the hope community share the joy and the love together all righty so I hope you've enjoyed learning more about the awakened way. I want to share with you that the three E's of living a divinely guided life are educate yourself, which the Messages of Hope show aims to do every week with these hour-long programs. So I hope you subscribed, right? Click subscribe and notify me. And the second E, experience for yourself. And that's what all the gifts on my website, website, my in-person events, my monthly connection webinars. I have one coming up very shortly. It's always under upcoming events on the homepage of my website. My monthly connection webinars are aimed at educating you. My in-person classes, the gifts on my website, the daily messages on my Awaken Way app are all about educating you about the greater reality that you are part of now. And the third E, engage higher consciousness and you just did it right now in that practice talking to the angels the goal is to get to the point where you feel them engaging back with you and i know this is possible for you why because you are not only human thank you so much for joining me for this special part one episode about angels i know we're going to have a part two because hundreds of you sent in your questions and i want to keep going until we answer almost all of them some of them were repeats I love you all. Thank you so much for being part of this show and we'll see you next week.